Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. This is Katie O'Brien, and I'm on Comic-Con Radio with your host, Galaxy. Good afternoon and good evening. This is Galaxy signing in for Comic-Con Radio. Comic-Con! Coverage of pop culture events from around the globe. Amazing interviews with celebrities. Daily recaps and reviews of popular television. The Walking Dead. Z Nation. Van Helsing. DC Titans. Flash. The Legends of Tomorrow. Black Lightning. American Horror Story. The Green Arrow. Movie reviews. Everything Comic-Con and fandom from around the globe comic-con radio get ready to enter our universe let's go good morning good afternoon good evening this is your boy galaxy on comic-con radio today we have an amazing guest we have katie m o'brien she is the badass kicking george on this season's Z Nation, and she's wonderfully here, and we're excited to have her. And Katie, what's up, girl? How are you? I am just fantastic. Thank you very much. You have such a great energy. I love it. (laughs) Thank you so much. Hey, the energy has to be up. I have to give my energy to you, and uh, together we're going to have an amazing uh, show here today. Yeah, I can't wait. So, Katie, you're doing amazing this season on Z Nation. Is Z Nation one of your first big shows that you're on thank you yeah i mean it's it's the first show where i've gotten a bigger role um like my very first tv show was the walking dead so i think that has a bit more viewership but i had a much smaller part in it we remember you on the walking dead and uh, we actually announced on comic-con radio when you jumped to z nation we said one of the amazing uh, characters from the walking dead is now a, a lead person on the z nation and a lot of our fans got excited about that yeah yeah i love it like the zombie genre the diehard fans they'll just cross over to a lot of shows so it's just really fun to see the people that they're into you know the old george romero stuff into the walking dead into z nation and they've got they're like libraries of zombiness and it's really really fun to see that they recognize little treats that the show offers that i might not notice because maybe i'm not as diehard of a fan that's totally and absolutely true the zombie the the fandom world the comic-con world the fans are so supportive they're loving they're amazing i love them to death i've been in this for a long time and all i see is love um from them and they have a lot of love for you and you've gotten popular really fast your role as george on z nation is like booming you're it's like you and kalita smith how do you feel that uh, you're such a big part of z nation oh it's so great yeah i mean i was surprised when i originally got the part i didn't even know how big of a role it was until basically two days before i had to leave for spokane my agent called me on a sunday and was like yo uh you booked the role of george it's a series regular by the way pack your bags and be in spokane by tuesday for the next three four months so i was like what wait a second so right off the bat i was like i was i was not ready for how big of a part it was and then to see how integrated George was into the group, I was kind of worried because I know how I am with shows that I like. When a new person shows up, it's really hit or miss. And so I was kind of hoping that I wouldn't be the uh, swing and the miss that people hated my character or anything. But I'm, I'm so glad they love her character. And I think she brings some great representation to the show. Definitely a character that you don't get to see a lot on television. And certainly not one that has been shown on Z Nation yet. So I'm excited. It's great. Everyone's wonderful. No, you're amazing on the show. Before we get into a little more of Z Nation, on Walking Dead, you actually played Katie. How funny is that, right? Yeah. The first time I went down there, it's weird. They kept changing the part that I was supposed to have. I think I was credited as Prisoner of War 1 or something like that. And then I actually booked a feature film in Los Angeles, and they called the same week, and this was months later, to say that they needed me back. And they said it was going to be a bigger part and all of that, and then they changed the name to Katie and all that stuff. So I actually had to leave the film that I was shooting and went to Georgia again to, to reprise the role, I guess. Didn't realize I was going to be killed off right away, but it was so fun to play a zombie and walk around with those contact lenses where you can't see anything and have all the blood dripping all over your face and stuff. So it was a good time. That must have been so fun. 
Are you really into yeah. the zombie genre? You know, I'm I'm really into uh, the horror genre. So I like as a kid. I mean, I took any kind of monster classes that I could take. Love like Lon Chaney, you know, 1920s makeup special effects master. Uh, his Phantom of the Opera, his, his Hunchback of Notre Dame were awesome. Love Nosferatu. So I was really into like the monster scene early in life, like as a child. The zombies, honestly, that wasn't my favorite. I still like watching the movies, but because zombies used to be so slow, it wasn't scary to me. I'm like, yeah, just walk away, like, or just kill them. They're so slow. What's the problem? But now, you know, people have amped it up 28 days later, and Z Nation amps them up a lot. So the zombies have a lot of different qualities, I guess, almost superpowers in some ways. Uh, and that kind of zombie I can definitely get behind. The one that's like, oh, this could actually destroy the world. Yeah, that's scary. Well, you know, the zombie basically it's mass versus one. Like when someone's in a posse, you know, they attack you from different directions. They're slow as hell, but when there's 40 of them, uh, you're like you have nowhere to go and they're biting you and they, they don't care if they die because they're already dead. So that's the creepy part about it. But I understand what you're saying because... I remember when I saw the old George A. Romero movies and I was like, these guys are slack and run around them. And they did in those movies. But when I saw yeah, like yeah. 28 days later, I was like, how can you run from these ones? You know, that's, that's, freaky. yeah. Yeah. And I do, you know, I get the fear of like the, the quantity and then the, them still appearing very much alive, you know, and the more dilemma of, I got to kill my family member or something because they're bitten. And yet, will there be a cure? I don't know. Am I going to be able to live with myself if I kill this person? And then there's a cure like three weeks later. You know, there's a lot of dilemma with the zombie genre. So I'm not saying it sucks by any stretch of the imagination. I, I do like it. It's just not per se my favorite. The horror world is so huge. There's vamps and there's zombies and there's all sorts of horror stuff. As long as you love that genre and you're doing well in the genre so far, the best way to have a long-term career is get a role on a Comic-Con fandom superhero zombie type of show because you're going to build that cult following and you're going to be going on forever. Like 10 years from now, they'll still say, that's just George. And, you know, <laughs> even though you're going to be doing tons of new yeah. stuff, they'll still remember you as George. That's how they are. Yeah, I actually was talking to somebody about Buffy the Vampire Slayer. It's another huge fandom and how people are still, you know, losing their minds when they see any of the cast members, any like merchandise related to the show. And I get it. I mean, part of it's nostalgic. For the most part, you grow up with that stuff. And the other part is they're just really fun shows. The comic book world is just so imaginative. And it, there's really like an endless amount of storylines to tell and endless amount of characters to portray. It's really a really fun world to be a part of. Oh, yeah. It's, it's amazing. It's very energy driven. And the crowd are fanatics. And it's lovely to be around yeah. them. So you grew up in Indianapolis. Is that true? Yeah. How was that? Um, you know, it's quiet. It's much more conservative for the most part. Restaurants are closed by like a small townish feel, even though it's not a small town. But everybody's really nice. You know, I, I've never really had a problem with anybody in Indianapolis. People are very nice for the most part, welcoming. And I learned a pretty solid work ethic. In the Midwest, you really get that. I feel like nothing is given to you. You have to work for everything you get kind of mentality. And I really, really appreciate that. I think growing up in Indiana definitely helped me with that. Oh, that's really good to hear. As a kid, were you like an aspiring actress? You were like, oh, I want to be an actress. Is this something that grew from a childhood or later in life? I really did as a kid. I was actually with an agency when I was young. I did like a couple tiny commercials and like one or two little print things. But in the Midwest, at my age, in my time, um, I wasn't really sought after um, because, you know, the whole ethnically ambiguous thing wasn't really big in Indiana at the time. So people didn't really know what to do with me. It was kind of discouraging, I guess, when I was younger. I never really felt like I would be able to be successful in the industry. So I kind of just wrote it off. I still did plays. I still acted in whatever film came up that I could possibly act in. I still loved it, but I just wasn't confident enough to pursue it. Um, and so one day, you know, I was a police officer for seven years. And one day I was just like, I don't want to do this. This isn't my dream. My passion has always been to act. So I just wrote down a list of goals and a way to accomplish what I wanted to accomplish. I found a great class in Indiana. I built a great resume, good reel, and saved up a bunch of money to get to LA. And I've just have been so fortunate with 
how quickly things have happened. I mean, I've only been in L.A. for two years. I booked Walking Dead probably within the first year that I was here, and then immediately after Halt and Catch Fire, and almost immediately after that, I get away with murder. So it's been really, really a great year, great time, and I'm just very thankful that I seem to have met the right people um, and taken the right advice so far on my journey. Is it because you trained in martial arts, so you have that discipline? Also, you're from Indianapolis, so that's another discipline like you mentioned. You know, you have to work for everything. Also, on top of that, you were a cop, and then all of a sudden being an actress that's on a show that's being watched by millions. I mean, I started karate when I was five or six. It was really little. And you have to learn how to stand still. And as a kid, that's a huge step to, to take. But I think all of that kind of helps with the discipline, but it also helps you not be afraid, I guess, of taking the steps that you need to take to really put yourself out there. And I think a lot of what holds people back is not just not having the discipline, but it's fear. I mean, our mind plays a lot of tricks on us to try to keep us back from what we want to do. Even if it's just like making you think you're going to bomb an audition, so you just really work yourself up and get too nervous and you wind up even not going. I think that plays a lot. So I think uh, doing the police work definitely helped me with that. Because if I can go to an armed robbery or something, I can go into an audition room, right? Like, I'm not going to get shot in there. Sparring in martial arts, if I can take a punch to the face or hurt myself or whatever by getting hit by somebody, yeah, I, I can make it to my audition. I can make it to my callback. I'll be fine. So a lot of that helps for sure. That background has definitely helped me book parts, especially in these like apocalypse genre kind of shows. There's no doubt in my mind that having that background or just any kind of special trait really helps you in the industry. You've basically had such a long coming into who you are today because I saw your Muay Thai exam video, which is cool. And then I saw your bodybuilding stuff. Like, you were pretty cut up. Like, wow. It's cool. Like, you've done so much. How was the bodybuilding I just stuff? Saw something to do. Oh, it's good. It's good. I was just going to say, I just saw something today where someone was asking if Kalita was really 5'10", because on her Wikipedia or something, it says that she's 5'10". <laughs> I was like, what? I, it, it blows my mind how wrong the internet can be sometimes. Yeah, bodybuilding, that was so interesting. That's a, that's a whole nother level of discipline, too, because, you know, I literally had to weigh my food every night, like weigh it to make sure I was getting five ounces or whatever of chicken and however many ounces of rice. It, it's really crazy, next level stuff. And I really respect the people that do it year round for their whole life. Like they're very passionate about it. And they're great people to be around and they're a great energy to be around because they know what it's like to push past your comfort zone. But a really good trainer, a really good bodybuilder knows how far you can push this without injuring yourself too. Because obviously if you're injured, you can't train, you can't train, you're not going to get as lean as you need to be. And then you're going to not go on stage. So it's a really, really cool, I guess, art to be a part of. But I love going out to eat with my friends. That's like one of our number one things that we do, especially my friends in LA. It's something that I kind of had to make a sacrifice for, I guess. But, you know, it's thought about doing it again here and there, but it just doesn't fit in my lifestyle right now. Because I noticed when I saw you on Z Nation, you look buff. And I was like, she must have been like a competitor. Because usually when you compete and you're really cut and ripped, and then when you get off of training, you still look like you're at one point maybe a bodybuilder or someone really athletic. And yeah. you have that physique. And that physique of yours and the way you bring yourself out on the show really plays your character perfect. You're a perfect George. I'm telling you, oh, George was meant for you. you. The way you carry yourself, the way you speak, the way you're walking is, it's really cool. And, and I'm really excited and happy that you moved from The Walking Dead to a leading role on Z Nation. How does it feel getting fan emails and messages and all this support? Like, has it changed drastically? It has. I mean, I maybe got one or two random messages before and now it's like people I don't even know hitting me up all the time and some of it is like I feel super bad because hopefully they understand that I have a you know a life but I can't get back to everybody if it's a public message post it publicly I'm much more comfortable getting back to somebody in that form but when people start sending me private messages 
I'm very hesitant because, first of all, you know what kind of pics people send um, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> sometimes. Oh, yeah, we get <laughs> them, like, too. I don't even want to. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> I don't even want to open those up, right? But also, it's like I have to be able to separate that social media life and everything from my personal life. I mean, I train every day. Um, you know, I have a girlfriend that I want to spend as much time with when she's off work as I can. Um, I have a lot of friends, and I try, I'm constantly trying to meet up with people, check in, see how they're doing, especially people that just moved to L.A. or that I, you know, work with on projects, all of that. So I have my own life, and so I really try to balance that out, still try to be as active as I can and get back to people. But when it comes to, like, people messaging me, hey, I need you to tell me everything about yourself, and I'm like, well, no, I, I don't have time to do that. Like, Google me, I guess. That's, like, the best thing I can do. <laughs> um, but you know it's it's great, and for the most part, people understand that, and they're very respectful. Is your girlfriend an actress as well? No, God, no, no. She does not want anything to do with front of the camera. Um, she's a writer, and she actually works for a really cool production company. She's on the other side of the camera, but definitely knows the business. And honestly, that really helps too. Like when I had to go away for five months almost, she totally understood. It wasn't a problem. Obviously we miss each other, but you know, it wasn't as much drama as somebody who maybe doesn't understand the industry. And same with like, you know, she actually has been having a lot of fun with the fans because they have been interacting with her as well. So she thinks it's kind of funny that people are calling us with the fandom thing, like their mom or something. So now we have a bunch of children, I guess. I don't know, but <laughs> it's been, a, it's been, it's been weird, fun. Like, she's on her own fandom. She loves Supernatural, all of that. So she's had to teach me, like, what standing meant. She has to teach me all this stuff because I, I was like, what, is it? what does it mean? <laughs> so it's been great it just doing this with her, going through everything. I mean, she's my rock. I love her to death. Who was the first person you told once you got the leading role on Z Nation? Was it her or a family member or someone else? So she was actually sitting right across from me. Um, so was her because I... <laughs> My manager called me and we were at a coffee shop and I had this look on my face and I, I think I might have screamed at one point. I'm not sure. And so she's looking at me like, what is going on? But she knew it was good news. And yeah, so she was the first person and she was super excited. We immediately went out and had a great celebratory dinner. It was great times. That's so cool to hear. I ask everybody that question because I want to know who do they go to first? And when you have stress or problems on the set or you need help, Who's that first person you go to for that advice? Um, you know, I, I might call her. Uh, so like I said, she's really ingrained in the industry, and she kind of has some really good advice. If it's just some kind of, like, weird issue that I'm having with myself, uh, I might call my mom. I mean, I, I call my mom all the time. I love her, which, you know, you should love your mom, I guess. But <laughs> Yeah, right. But we're still very close, and we, we talk often. But, you know, it depends on what the issue is or sometimes who's near me. Honestly, like, our hair and makeup ladies were so great because, you know, they've worked the show several years, so they kind of know how it works. So if it was a problem or a question I was having about the show, I would just go to uh, camera, my hair lady, or Natasha, the lady does my makeup, and I might just ask them the question. And God, they have great advice, great insight, and they're just, ah, oh, I love them to death. They were so wonderful. Like, I don't know how I would have uh, made it without them, but... Um, yeah, they were they were awesome. And then every now and then, if it was an acting question, I could go get ask Russell, Kalita, Keith. They were all very open and willing to answer any questions that I might need. You're the second person from Z Nation that said that the hair and makeup people are cool. Natalie, I had her on the show a couple of weeks ago, and she was uh, like, yeah. "I love my hair and makeup people. They're so amazing." Yeah, like I. So I'm pretty sure I just got um, a broken nose. It's like I said, I train a lot. Of accidents happen. But so my nose is super swollen and I've got the little bruising under my eyes right now. And I've got a call back. I called my, my makeup lady right away. I was like, Natasha, you know, um, I'm headed to Mac. I need you to tell me what to buy and what to do with it <laughs> to like fix my face right now. And she was full on willing to give me like an entire makeup tutorial and all of that. But it wound up not being necessary. The swelling has gone down quite a bit <laughs> today. So totally understand what you're going through right now <laughs> you're gonna have to slab that makeup uh, on <laughs> yeah i mean of all days you know like uh, i know usually i'm like totally totally excited to rock a black eye but 
but I just called like, man, I really want the job. So yeah. (laughs) (laughs) That's funny. That's, that's cool. Yeah. Yeah. Rocking a black eye is cool, right? Because you do that and you're like, yep, I fight. What did you do to the other person? You know what I'm saying? (laughs) Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And you know what sucks is like, this one was my fault for sure. But you know, it, most of my auditions, I would say probably 80% of my auditions, a black eye walking in there, that would be great. Yeah. So they would be like, oh, this is the girl for sure, because she obviously trains or gets punched in the face or whatever. Uh, but this audition, I'm, it's a commercial one, so i got to be like hip and tag and all of that. <laughs> and it's just maybe not super fitting for it. Black eye no teeth's not going to work on this one. <laughs> not on this one. <laughs> maybe for the Walking Dead or Z Nation, they're like, okay, she got punched in the face, her tooth's missing, let's get her on set. <laughs> exactly, exactly. That's funny. Does any of your old buddies call you and like, oh my God, I see you on TV? Um, so, you know, what was great leaving my department, they were unbelievably just supportive. And both my departments, I, I did university police for a while and then I moved to the city police. And they all have my back 100%. A lot of them watch the episode uh, or the show. So yeah, it's it's great support. You know, I keep in touch with a few of them regularly and they give their feedback and some of them will even binge whatever show I'm on from start to catch up just to see, you know, what's going on and then catch up to where I am. Can't ask for a better group of pals, really. <laughs> They're going to stick with you for the most part. It's very loyal. That's nice because that's a loyal team, right? You guys were like arm to arm together fighting crime and now you're on Z Nation kicking zombie butt. You know what else I thought it was weird? Imagine people that you've put away. They're probably in their cell watching <laughs> you on Z Nation now. How crazy yeah, is that? It is, it's super weird. But, you know, one of the cool things, I don't know. It's one of the things I tried to do, as I think you should, just be as respectful as possible to everybody that you come across. And more often than not, had people come up to me on the streets and either thank me for arresting them. I know that's a silly thing or it sounds like a silly thing, but, or, or just at least thanking me for, for treating them well, that kind of deal. So I'm not really worried about anybody <laughs> seeing me on TV and having like hateful thoughts. Like I got to go to this convention and kill her or anything like that. Um, you know, I've had a couple people that I put away for a while, but I'm not worried about them because I don't think they're going to be out anytime soon. So yeah, it is weird though. They won't come to the convention either. They won't be there. They're, you're safe. <laughs> yeah. You're safe. Plus, you know, you're a hardcore martial artist, Muay Thai, bodybuilder, ass kicking, zombie killing young lady. And you're doing amazing. And you look good. You look great. And I'm like, she has a look and she's going to be sky high, skyrocket. I really like that you've came to Z Nation. I think you changed the whole show. You're basically the leading person. I'm sorry to say it. I know Kalita Smith is. She's amazing. But like you took over Z Nation. I think without you, the season wouldn't have been anything. How do you feel about that? Well, that is very sweet. Um, I, you know, and I appreciate your your kind words for sure. Um, Don't be but, shy. You know, it's, it's, <laughs> no, it's it's such a group effort um, because you know part obviously part of my character's strength comes from the other actors, and obviously it's an interesting year for sure. It is very different uh, because for starters, it's less episodic you know we're not going one episode to the next where you know they don't make sense together they all kind of you know each episode leads to the next one so in general it's just a different season for that aspect and i typically prefer serialized shows for that reason i like to follow a story but then the other thing too is everybody is teaching this character what they know and what they have to offer to show what it means to be a really great leader because you know one Warren has certain flaws that Doc can fill in. And then Doc has certain flaws and Warren has certain flaws that Murphy fills in, you know. And all of these characters together make this wonderful team and they're all trying to uh, give George the advice that she needs to basically run a country, be successful in this apocalyptic era. They're giving her experience. They're giving her support. They're basically the army that she needs right now to accomplish the goals that she needs. So it's such a fun show because there are so many differences and because they can just let every character shine. You know, it just has that funness to it that everybody gets to be the best at something in their own way. I appreciate what you said. I I will take it to heart, but they're definitely um, 
a hundred percent the reason the show is successful. Of course it is. And of course you're going to say that because they're going to listen to the episode and you know, you have to stay as humble as possible, but you know, the fans know what's up and you know, we'll let that go for right now, <laughs> but you know, to, <laughs> I'm a big supporter of Z nation. I tell the team here, we have to support Z nation, Van Helsing, all these sci-fi shows because we love it. And we created a hashtag called watch live and it's really amazing and it feels great. Here's the thing. When I watch you, how much of Katie is George and how much of George is Katie? It was really weird getting the script. And I was like, wow, this character description, that's a lot of how I would describe myself. Like, that's me. Reading the words that she said, just even the insecurities that she has, all of that. I was like, this, this is me. And as the season went on, you know, they kind of start to write the character a little bit more like the person playing them as well. So, for instance, if I showed up and I sucked at fighting, George might be purely more of a diplomat without any fighting skills or maybe any one-two punch or something like that. But since I really wanted to get out there and I really wanted to do some martial arts, even with my sprained ankle and all that, they were able to put that in there, and we were able to play with that a lot. Um, so there's a little bit of a balance. I'm not very political. I would feel very uncomfortable giving public speeches and things. To an extent, George does too, but she's an activist and all that, and that kind of has actually encouraged me to be more active in politics, active in my community, and that kind of thing. So that's a really cool thing. Thing that I've gotten from the character because it really is important and especially in this time it's important to be active and to voice who you are and your thoughts and opinions but everything else I mean it was really just like falling into my own skin you know and the more they added to my makeup wardrobe everything like the second I put the costume on I was like I got this I know exactly who this character is and this is going to be a blast and it was that's really cool to hear when you read the script you're like, oh my God, this is me and I'm just being myself. Yeah, it's the apocalypse. Yeah, there's zombies. Yeah, this and that. But if you could be yourself as much as possible and play that role, that's such a great feeling. Do you get a lot of support from the LGBT community because you have this role on Z Nation? The support that I do get is overwhelming. You know, I one of my big worries was that you would get some person that was like really gay hating or whatever, just get on my social media and just start blasting me or my girlfriend or somebody for being gay. And that was something that really worried me. But it hasn't happened yet. And to be honest, the support is so strong that I don't think it's going to bother me as much. I mean, it, it does bother me that people carry hate in their hearts, but that's going to be on them. No, you got a lot of support. You got a lot of love. You're doing great. Yeah. You portray yourself really well. You're very humble. Like you said, in your short career, you've done so much. You know, who gets a leading role on a series like this two years in and acting? I've, you know, I know so many people in the acting community and they like work a decade before they get something that you have. So you're blessed. That blessing yeah. is going to go out there and just fill everyone's hearts. And I know you got a lot of support and people love you. And you know what? The fandom Comic-Con community has your back. So you're going to just shine and keep going up and up and up and up. Who is the funniest person on Z Nation? Like real funny, like off camera. You know what? Knowing all of them, if I said Russell's the obvious answer, and Russell is hilarious, and he's like one of my best buds. I love him to death. Um, so he's so funny. But I know that everybody wants to be funny on the show. So by just saying Russell, I feel like I'm doing everyone a disservice. Um, I think, you know, Nat, actually, uh, as quiet as he is, his physical comedy, just his movements, and just, you know, when he's just walking around, He's actually really, really funny and adorable. So I really enjoyed his presence. Keith is a funny guy. He's a great storyteller. And Kalita actually is getting a little bit of a stand-up routine together. So she was kind of dropping some bombs off camera almost all the time. <laughs> and she's actually, you know, she, her character doesn't get to play funny very often because she's kind of more of the serious straight man in the, uh, in the show. But she's actually really funny behind the scenes. So um, I would toss in Russell and Kalita. Kalita plays such a serious person. And Keith Allen, of course, you could tell even on the show, he has that court jester kind of like uh, the way he speaks yeah. and stuff like that. And of course, Russell Hodgkinson, and everybody says that. Everybody I've spoken to, they go straight to Doc. Yeah. Like, he's the funniest dude. He is. And he's 
so creative. I mean, it just blows my mind. Our rap gift, he was responsible for our entire rap gift this time around. And he put together this little Z Wacker pen. And then he had this bookmark that was a $5 bill and like he crossed out a bunch of like random stuff on it and made it very Z Nation, very funny. And I was like, how did you even come up with this? You're a genius. I just, I love him so much. He's just, he's <laughs> He's awesome. Yeah, I've seen some uh, photos of him, and he's a younger dude if you take that beard off. <laughs> he looks so much younger. I but... know. I know. It's funny to see it. Um, I, I, his driver's license picture is beardless, and it's like, what? <laughs> but he's rocking it. He has a bunch of support with beard people and mustache people. I didn't realize how big of a community that was, but uh, it is, and he's got their backing 100%. <laughs> So, no, he has to keep awesome. this beard. He has to keep the beard and the mustache now because everybody knows him as this look now. And I think that look's going to carry him far, you know, <laughs> to so many comedic totally. roles. Totally. It's great for him. What is like a role that you want to get into? What is the perfect role for you? Hands down, 100% Xena Warrior Princess, my dream role of all time. That's it. Let's pray. Comic-Con gods. I do this in every show. I ask yeah. everybody this, and then I pray for them. I'm like, the Comic-Con gods, please listen to Katie. Make her Xena Warrior Princess. You would be a perfect Xena Warrior Princess. You got the build, the look, the everything. They just got to put a big-ass wig on you, but it's all good, right? right? <laughs> yeah, you know what? I have worn a wig before. <laughs> it's very interesting. Uh, that little flashback wig or whatever that we yeah. had for episode two. <laughs> <laughs> yeah every time that zombie tackled me i swear it felt like it flew off and slammed back on my head you know like comic relief i almost wish that it did happen because it, it was actually secured on really well it just felt that way and i almost wish it did happen and the camera caught it because that would just be just a dream <laughs> it was so uh, funny when i saw that episode with the team here i was like that's a fake wig <laughs> It was kind of close to what my hair used to look like when it was short, but not as short as it is now. You know, it was fun. <laughs> Your do now fits you well. It fits that whole chisel look you're going after. That's the look you have. And that's the look I think that everybody's uh, knowing you for. And, and that, that that's the way it's going to go. You know, it's same thing on The Walking Dead and now on Z Nation. How cool is it that you could keep your hair the way you want and you know oh. the outfit you're wearing how cool is that it is so cool actually when i first arrived my first day uh in the hair and makeup room the showrunner wanted me to shave my head um just completely buzz and i uh i, I couldn't do it it was it's just not my thing because i love the hairstyle that i have so much and i just feel so comfortable with it and of course i'm walking next to a leaf blower <laughs> but yeah i love the hairstyle that i have so much that I just really, uh, I couldn't do it. And he let me keep it the way it is. And I think it actually works really well. So I'm glad that he did that. And it's great that people, you know, let me keep it this way. And, you know, my whole thing is if it's a problem, if you want longer hair, put a wig on or put extensions in. It's not the end of the world. It's easier to go this way than have it long and want me to bald cap it, I think. I guess I shouldn't speak. I, I know nothing about bald capping people, but my <laughs> assumption is it would be easier <laughs> and look more real. <laughs> Call your team. They probably know about ball capping, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that outfit you wear on Z Nation, would that be an outfit you would wear outside in the streets? Would you feel comfortable with that? A hundred percent. The spikes might be weird. Um, <laughs> just the chain mail and spikes on the um, costume might be a little awkward. But everything else, it's great. The steampunk boots, I, mean, I like the boots just stunt-wise, like trying to do kicks and stuff in them. I remember the first time I was practicing uh, a kick in them and they were so heavy that I literally like was dragged to the ground like I've never felt gravity pulled me back two times harder uh, until I tried to jump in those shoes but you know they gave me some cool little ninja shoes and yeah all of that I would 100% wear my costume what if for Halloween next year you wear your Z Nation get up and then people are going to think you're copying George but it's really you. You know, I actually, um, I was joking with Anastasia, and I might still do it, but I was going to go as Addy for Halloween as a joke. But, you know, hey, maybe I'll do that instead. You could pull maybe that I'll off. Go as myself. You could pull that off. I can see you as Addy with a patch on your eye. <laughs> well, I was going to feel weird if I went as Addy and she didn't go as George. So yeah. until we can form a good bond, a Halloween bond, I think we'll just play it by ear, I guess. Just play year by, by ear and stick out something else.
<laughs> <That's funny>. Yeah. <laughs> so you went to the, uh, what, Indiana University. Yes. And your education background, do you think that played a large role in you kind of pushing to acting or it was just more for studies and I had to finish school? You know, I mean, psychology definitely does because you're constantly having to analyze yourself and your character. The German hasn't, <laughs> hasn't done much um, for for my acting career, except that, you know, that we, we do a lot of interesting German philosophy reading and any kind of uh, philosophy expansion, I think, helps as well. But yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Did you do any acting um, when you were in university or? You know, like college, I was in a an improv troupe called Who's On First. So that was kind of a, the most... Um, stage time that I got. I did a couple little films and stuff behind the scenes, but I wasn't able to, with my 21 credit hours a semester, <laughs> wasn't really <laughs> able to fit a bunch of stuff in. <laughs> so you were a studyaholic, huh? I was, yeah. I, I shouldn't say all of those were really tough classes. I changed my major like three or four times. <laughs> so that was part of the problem. Because I thought like at one point I was like, okay, I'll just major in neuroscience. And then I did everything that you would need to major in neuroscience until I realized I'd have to take like two more extremely hard science classes. And that would make me say another semester or something. And I was like, screw it. So I changed that major. <laughs> like I just kept flip-flopping. I think the majority of the extra classes were martial arts or some kind of extra easy or something like that add to those credit hours but that's one of the things is the indian university their martial arts program actually counts as school credit i was taking classes for credit and you know one of my friends was doing a major in martial arts and wound up doing a whole like thesis and everything which was really cool that we were able to put that program together for him you know it's funny all the stuff that i've trained i've never had to break a wood brick anything i've never, <laughs> never had to like break anything except you know the occasional bone on accident do you love muay thai oh yeah i do i love it it's it's one of my favorites for sure but i definitely not kicking trees and stuff like <laughs> not doing it <laughs> like band down um, I need, <laughs> yeah i just i need my shins you know i'm getting older and <laughs> they're not gonna last much longer so i gotta take it as easy as i can <laughs> honestly i thought you were like 21 years old I swear to you, when I saw you, I was like, she's about 21. And then when I looked it up, I was like, she's been a cop for seven years. She went to university. Yeah. This girl is older than that. You have that face. Yeah. You look very young. Would you take a martial arts role if a movie came up? Oh, for sure. Yeah, of course. Let's do it. Okay. Comic-Con world, give her a martial arts role and make her a Xenia warrior princess. So those are two things we're going to play <laughs> for you uh, to, awesome. <laughs> to get in the future. Awesome. Let's keep it coming. <laughs> It's funny just talking to everyone that great long careers and after every gig, you're like, well, will I get another one? <laughs> you know, and it's the same thing every time, apparently. So, yeah, it's a little bit more stressful because it's definitely not stable work, but uh, I wouldn't I wouldn't change it for the world. It's been just quite a fun experience. And I love every second that I'm on set. It's like whatever struggle it was. Um, to get there was more than worth it. Have you ever been on set and you were like, oh, my God, I'm living my dream. Did you ever feel that? Every day. Yeah. Every single day. It was it was wonderful. And that makes it just so easy to get up and go to work. You know, it's, when you're waking up at 3 a.m. to drive in and you're still happy about it, that's a great feeling. That's awesome. Because, you know, sometimes you're like fast paced. You're going to these casting calls and you're going here and there. But then when you're actually on set and you have a major role like George, you know, leading character mm -hmm. and you're on all these posters and everything, you must be like, wow, that's me. Is that surreal for you being on all those like posters and billboards and commercials? Yeah. I mean, I, it still hasn't like really hit yet, I guess. Um, but it is, it's, it's super strange, very cool. Um, and I don't know when I, that moment will hit where you're like, whoa, <laughs> you know, I don't know when that's going to happen or if it will. Um, but so far, you know, the, the exposure that it's gotten me, the experience it's gotten me, um, you know, the people that I've met, the fun I had, you know, just even watching the episodes just reminds you of like the fun little things you did that day. And it's just great. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a dream. That's good that you're humble. You know, you're you come from a professional background. You're in law enforcement, actually a police officer, actually on the force, doing the thing, not just studied for it. It's crazy that now you're an actress. And when I saw you 
on the first episode of this season, I was like, we have to talk because we got to see what's up. It's so great. It changed everything. Is there any time that when you're on set, you kind of get nervous? You're like, "Uh oh, the next episode, I'm not going to be here. I know you have contracts and you sign them, but do you kind of like say, "Uh oh, I wish this can go another season and I wish I'm part of it. Do you ever have that feeling? Yeah. Well, especially now that we're not sure if there will be another season. Um, that is a little nerve wracking because mostly, you know, I'm just going to miss people, um, <laughs> for, for, for sure. Um, but I think a lot of times in your contract, especially as a series regular, you generally know if, you know, let's say the next season, you're not going to make it far into the season. You generally should know that. Um, unfortunately like guest stars, stuff like that, they might not know ahead of time, but, um, yeah, I'm not, I'm not super nervous. I mean, if I if they need to kill me off, they need to kill me off, and <laughs> hopefully it plays well to the story, and uh, I'm sure I'll find something in the future. It's all good. It's all good. Well, we yeah. love you, Katie. You're amazing. Thank you for coming on the show. Is there anything you want to shout out and say to the Comic-Con world? Oh, just thank you so much for all of your support. We love your enthusiasm. The energy that you give us is just, it, it makes our day for sure. Um, you know, everybody talks about how wonderful the Z Nation fans are and everybody really is fulfilling that legacy. It's just a dream that everybody is so kind, so gracious, so supportive. So let's try to keep this up for another season at least. Um, so just keep, you know, everybody's working really hard to retweet and talk about season six and try to get that energy going and get people to view and just keep doing that. You know, we have another few episodes left. They're going to be really fun. We have some really special guest stars coming up. So I'm hoping that people will watch and enjoy. And, you know, maybe we'll get another season out of it. That's it. So hashtag watch live. Hashtag renew Z Nation season six. Hashtag we love George. Hashtag Katie, you're awesome. Here's the thing. Katie, <laughs> what's your social media for all the fans out there so they can follow you and show their love? Yeah, on Instagram, it's OK, the KO. And on, oh, wait, that's Twitter. Twitter's OK, the KO. And Instagram is the KDO. It's K A T Y. And remember, if you send her bad pics, she's going to OK, the KO on you. So there you go. Exactly. This is Katie <laughs> M. O'Brien, George on Z Nation. We love you. She was on Walking Dead, she was a cop. She's not afraid of black eyes. She's amazing. We love you. And this is the end of the show where I say good morning, good afternoon, good evening. This is your boy Galaxy with Katie M. O'Brien from Z Nation. And we're signing out and we blow a million kisses. Ready, Katie? One, two, three. Mwah, to everybody. There you go. She gave you a kiss <laughs> and a black eye. Thank you, guys. We'll see you. <laughs> Peace. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. This is Galaxy signing out from another amazing episode of Comic-Con Radio. Tune in for your daily shows of Comic-Con Radio. Go to comic-con-radio.com. Reach us on social media, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, at Comic-Con Radio. You can call us toll-free right now. 800 976 800-976-0305. 800-976-0305. Comic-Con Radio, taking the world one listener at a time.